You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with none other than Joel Parent from the band Ninja Spy, a trio from Vancouver. Joel, thanks for taking time to talk to me. Yeah, bud. No worries. Uh, so how you been? Uh, what you been listening to lately? Ooh, listening to? Uh, well, I was uh, driving and late for this interview um, and uh, listening to Queen. Um, no way. And uh, man, Queen is just something I always go back to. Just Really? Uh, just because it's so theatrical. And Brian May is in my top five favorite guitar players for sure. No way. That's Especially his lead tone. It's just so good. Okay, cool, cool. So is that uh, for you, like, I mean, you have to help me understand here. Ninja Spy and you guys in general, you have a very, uh, let's say, unique uh, history, given the fact that not only are you all excellent players, but you're all brothers at the same time. So you kind of have to help me understand the origin of how you guys got together and playing. And like, was this just a plan set out by your parents? Did they like put musical instruments all over the playroom? So as a toddler, you'd like crawl around and run into a guitar or something like that. Like, how do you remember falling in love with music? Uh, Well, for me, it was, I mean, music was definitely always around. My whole family is musical for sure. Um, But I didn't really get started into actually wanting to play music until I was a little older, so like 11. And um, and it was from having older cousins who were into grunge. Um, that's what made me, me want to play guitar and sing. So. Okay. And so was guitar your first instrument? Uh, well, I guess I did piano lessons when I was a kid. But yeah, guitar is, guitar is my first instrument, so. Okay, and how about, like, for the origins of the band, how do you remember, like, starting playing with your brothers? Uh, Once they were a little older, um, I think Tim was 12. uh, Oh, no, I guess he would have been 11. uh, And Adam was 13. Then it seemed like, you know, okay, cool. They're old enough to play well enough to start a band with. and then it was just out of convenience, really. Um, everybody wanted to play. And so we just started. I, I'd had some bands with friends previous to that because uh, the boys were a bit too young. But yeah, once they were a bit older, we just it just was convenient. Hey, we all play. Let's play together. So, so what kind of early stuff were you guys jamming on? What were your influences back then? It was even more all over the place. Um than Ninja Spy is. Uh, <laughs> it was like everything from grunge to like sort of tooly prog metal to uh, reggae and ska and sort of uh, grungy punk and like lots and lots of different stuff. And uh, the only so called album we ever put out <clears throat> in those days was just that. It was like four different sessions and seven completely different styles of music. So um oh. it took us quite a while to, to own it in and, and and some might even argue that we never even really did own it in <laughs> that much style wise but <laughs> so what was it like uh, transitioning from like learning other people's material to finally like writing material yourselves um you know what i did both pretty much from the get-go i started writing songs when i started um learning uh, other people's songs because I think I decided right away that, that that's why I wanted to play guitar was to write and to be in a band so I think that's great I think a lot of people kind of hold off on trying to write their own music at the beginning and I, I've always been one of those people who say don't you know like go try to make your own stuff I think that might be why you you kind of developed your own sound almost right away like when the first time I heard you guys it was like this sound like now i know what ninja spy sounds like you know Mm. what i mean was there any point where like you were kind of starting to discover like you had a style yeah i mean like i said we were pretty all over the place um so i don't think i ever really did nail it down no i have lots of things (laughs) i like it gets um more and more cohesive as time goes on but any material that I write for Ninja Spy, you know, is in as um, concise a vein of styles as possible. But that's always just the tip of the iceberg. And I always have, you know, a million other songs that that wouldn't fit Ninja Spy because they're 
you know, some acoustic and some some sort of rapping and some, you know, all sorts of stuff. So, uh, so the name Ninja Spy, wh- wh- how did you guys come up with that? <laughs> it was like a just kind of a silly thing at first. Um, I was just talking with a friend, ninjas and spies, and just being silly. <clears throat> And uh, I like the idea of combining ancient wisdom and martial skill with modern gadgetry. And that sort of seemed to fit with what we were doing musically as well, to a certain extent. So uh, so that's why I chose the name. <clears throat> but uh, it was actually my mom. She kind of called me out on it. She was like, you don't know anything about ninjas and what it means. Uh, or you know, it's like a, a real thing from a real place and is a real culture and whatever. <clears throat> and so I started looking into it and uh, realized that what ninjutsu or ninpo was all about was exactly kind of where I was headed in my personal and spiritual journey. So, uh, so ninja spy actually ended up taking on a lot more meaning um, <clears throat> as time went on, and I actually did. Um, uh, martial arts training for like 10 years as well so i I would love to know more about that so it's like a martial art training but also sort of like a a philosophy yeah there's i mean you can take or leave um some of the philosophy and focus just on the martial skill but for me i was into all of it uh and so yeah there's a philosophy behind it there's all sorts of spiritual practice as well as the, the the physical practice so um yeah, it was everything I was looking for uh, as a discipline. And so has that kind of embracing that, has that found its way into your lyrics as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, so a song like Shuriken Dance from Spukin. Um, obviously, Shuriken is like a throwing star. Um, and uh, Throwing the Skank Down, that was definitely inspired by doing martial arts. I've written lyrics about different kata from from the art um and yeah definitely lots of the philosophy i've, I've put in lyrics as well on songs like uh, dead duck dock or um uh, can't think of anymore off the top of my head but yeah it's it's definitely in there uh so i have to reveal that i'm completely ignorant what what is a kata a kata is a a movement or a series of movements that are generally practiced and repeated. Um, so it would be like, you know, a punch, kick, step, bunch of movements. So that's what a kata is. Okay, so for your guys' uh, EP, No Kata, what, what was the significance of the name there? So that's actually Japanese. So when you say no in Japanese, it's like the apostrophe S in English. So it's a it's basically like a possessive particle. So uh, ninja spy no kata means ninja spy's kata or the kata of ninja spy. Wow. So that's what, that was the, the meaning of the name there. So, so that EP is supposed to, supposed to show the gamut of different styles and sort of dance styles incorporated with our sound. Wow. Wow. That's cool. That's so cool. So, uh, yeah, going more into like the writing process and everything like that. What was it like going from Pi Nature to uh, Spukin? Or am I saying? Am I pronouncing that yep. right? Yeah, those Spukin. right. Uh, so uh, I imagine you know there was a, a big ba- gap of time in between the two albums. So the, the way the band must have approached it must have been a bit different than Pi Nature. Yeah, well, actually, some of the material that's on Spukin was very new, but some of it was actually quite old and just had been songs that we'd been working on for uh, quite a while. Uh, So like the material on the album spans 10 years. Um, Wow. Some of it new, some of it older. So, so the process wasn't that much different um, as far as writing. uh, Cause yeah, some of it was already, uh, already around in the pie nature days. And, Right now, as for ongoing projects, I imagine you guys just never really stop working on music, do you? Yeah, at the very least, I like to uh, make sure I'm writing a little bit. I haven't done a ton lately, but um, 
I'm always noodling on a little something for sure. <laughs> so. uh, being a trio, uh, I think some people kind of get the idea in their head that that would be a setback there being only the three of you in terms of like what you can really accomplish. But do you see it more as like a challenge and like, like uh, strength? Yeah, I mean, what it means if you're in a trio or a duo even, which you see a lot of these days, is that there's just way more room for each instrument to do stuff. And there's way more room for you to fill sonically. So uh, so it can be an advantage, actually, because you're not competing with like a second guitar and a keyboard uh, that are trying to use all the same frequencies that you're using. Um, and then you, all of a sudden you got to write either play the same thing uh, or harmonize with each other or play around each other. So the less people in the band, the more freedom you have. That makes a lot of sense. And, and for touring too, like uh, it must kind of make things simpler. Yeah. You don't need as big of a vehicle. You don't have to smell as many people's feet. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's, but then you also have to, you have less, pairs of hands to haul all the gear and, and do the work. So uh, we usually bring an extra person or two on tour to help with that. So wh what other hobbies do you guys have? Like what other ways do you kind of like find uh, inspiration, other influences and in other media, maybe a TV show or books or anything like that? Well, all of us are definitely into um, a bit of hiking. Um, not super hardcore, sometimes hardcore, but, you know, just getting out into trees and water and uh, ripping around. So that's definitely, that was one of the things that's nice about Touring Canada is you get to do a whole bunch of that, um, you know, stopping at lakes and and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, being outdoors is a big one for us. Um, as far as, like, other hobbies that inspire music, um, not really, just life. <laughs> life well, just anything life. that you guys are just curious or really into. Uh, I watch a lot of ghost videos lately. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that um, counts. Uh, we we've, we've uh, especially Tim and I have definitely had a um, uh, been into fantasy quite a lot, fantasy fiction, you know, like Tolkien and Game of Thrones. Actually, we all we all got into Game of Thrones, but. Uh, what is the best way for people to find and just keep up to date with what you guys are doing on the internet? Is it through Facebook? Uh, yeah, you can go to our Facebook page. Uh, it's just facebook.com forward slash ninja spy. We post there pretty regularly, um, <clears throat> when we're doing stuff. Um, and we do have a website, but it went down and I still haven't got the stupid web check people to fix it. So normally ninja spy.net, uh, has our web store. You can buy our albums. Um, and, uh, and, you know, our news page and, and music and pictures and all that stuff. Uh, so ninjaspy.net will be up. It's not up right now, but it will be back up. So that's a good place to go as well. And is there anything that you wanted our listeners to know? Um, just that creativity is important and if you are a creative person and you find yourself being swallowed up by life and creativity is going to the wayside try to just hold tight to the core of what's important uh, and if it means being less busy so that you can be more creative and just be more good to yourself in that way uh, do that uh, and I, I say all of that because that's kind of what I'm doing as a as a as a musician but as a person generally um, because Ninja Spy is not really um, active right now, that's where I'm at, is just chilling, playing music, being good to myself. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's sort of what I've been reflecting on. So that's what I would, that's what I would pass on. That's perfect. I was, I was going to ask you any advice you'd give to aspiring artists, but I think that, that kind of sums it up right there. Yeah, totally. That's a, you got to start there. If, if you're not, if you're not loving being creative, or like you start to, you know, just do too much, worry too much about practical stuff that you need to do when you're trying to release music. If that's wrecking your enjoyment of making music, then you need to sort of 
rebalance if you can. Definitely. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. Uh, you've been listening to The Peach Fit. I'm here with Joel Parent from Ninja Spy, who is great to take time to talk to you about creativity and everything like that. So thank you for taking time. Yeah, buddy. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Talk to you again soon, maybe, eh? Yeah, sounds good, buddy. We'll do. All right. Take care. Bye.